Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing some thrift flips using Recycled's new label decoupage paper. For our first project, I'm going to be giving these sweet little mini drawers a makeover. My first step is to take out the drawers from the frame itself. And after cleaning, I'm going to be giving these one coat of Dixie Bell's Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain. I have misted the wood first and then I am applying my stain. Adding that water is going to help the stain to be applied more evenly. And it's also going to make my product go a little bit further. I'm then coming in with a paper towel to remove some of the excess. If I see some areas that are more obviously lighter than others, I will come in and add a little bit more as you saw me do there. And then I'm going to work my way around and add that same product to the rest of this drawers. Remember, you can find a full product list in the description below and all these products on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. While that's drying, I'm going to focus on the little drawers themselves. I'm going to apply two coats of Dixie Belle's Drop Cloth Chalk Mineral Paint just to the front of the drawers. I don't want to go on the sides of the drawers because I am worried that if I add that paint, it might make it tricky to pull the drawers in and out. So two coats of this and letting it dry thoroughly. Next, I'm going to be using Roy Cycled's new Label Masterboard Decoupage Paper. Here you can see that I'm using the little drawers as a guide to work out which of these beautiful labels is going to be suitable. And then I am carefully trimming out the design that I want. This paper has so many gorgeous designs, so I'm going to be able to use one smaller design and this larger design. I wanted it to look a little bit more vintage, so I'm using some water on a paintbrush and adding that to the edges. And that allows me to very carefully rip around the edges. It gives it a more vintage feel. I'm then going to be using Dixie Belle's flat clear coat. I'm applying a thick coat to the front of the drawer and then very carefully pressing my decoupage paper down. I'm using a ball of cling wrap to smooth my paper down to get rid of any air bubbles or wrinkles. This reduces the chance of ripping. I'm then going to go over the top of the decoupage paper with another coat of the flat clear coat. I'm going to repeat the same process for our smaller design as well. For our wider drawer, I'm going to be using JRV's Apothecary Stencils. I'm using Dixie Bell's Anchor Silk Mineral Paint to stencil with, and I'm offloading majority of my product before I go in with a dabbing and swirling motion. For our other smaller drawer, I'm also taking part of a stencil from the JRV Apothecary Stencils Pack and I'm just going to be adding the address. I thought that worked well with the decoupage paper as they both say that they are from Ohio. Once my paint was dry, I used some 220 grit sandpaper to distress back the design. Again, just adding to that old weathered feel. There was a little bit of overhang on the smaller drawer that we decoupaged, so I'm using some of that same sandpaper to sand in a downward motion to trim off the excess. I'm then going to be using some of Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in Clear over the drawers and then some of Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in Brown to add to that rustic aged feel. I'm applying some of the product and then I'm using a microfiber cloth to wipe back the excess. I'm able to wipe back as much or as little as I want because we're putting that clear down first. I'm going to be repeating the same process for each of the drawers. I really feel like this adds to that vintage feel. If you do not have access to wax, you could use a paint wash instead. I definitely recommend sealing your paint first with a clear coat first though, or you could come in with a glaze. Finally, I'm going to use the same clear wax to seal the frame of our drawers. And here's a look at our apothecary style drawers. Mm -hmm. 
I'm really happy with how these turned out. That new Labels Masterboard decoupage paper is absolutely gorgeous and it goes beautifully with my JRV Apothecary stencils. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments. For our second project, I'm going to be using this sweet little canister that I picked up for a few dollars and I'm going to be painting it first with Rust-Oleum's cream paint. I wanted that down to block off some of that really bright pattern and now I'm using Dixie Belle's drop cloth chalk mineral paint to paint the rest of the jar. Now I could have just used a clear but I really felt like those colors were really bright and I felt like they would continue to bleed through my light colored paint. I'm going to be giving this little jar two coats of the drop cloth and then I'm moving on to a, another little ceramic canister I got this little one I did just spray with Rust-Oleum's clear matte sealer because it only had a smaller design on it that I didn't feel would bleed through and I'm going to be doing the same thing here giving this two coats of Dixie Bell's drop cloth and I am dabbing and stippling that paint on it gives it more of a natural look it looks less painted there's less brush strokes Once my paint was dry, I pulled out this label from the Labels Masterboard. It says cologne on it. I thought it went beautifully with the shape of our little canister that we have here. I'm trimming pretty close to the design here and I'm not ripping it because this would have been a sort of professional label. So we're going to decoupage it on with Dixie Belle's Flat Clear Coat. I'm applying a generous amount of product. And then I'm going to very carefully press my design down. Now this is a curved surface, so we are going to have some wrinkles, but I'm just going to embrace them. And I'm also going to use a mister to mist and dampen the paper. This allows it to stretch and expand and mold to my surface better. So I'm coming in with some more of that flat clear coat over the top, and then I'm going to seal the entire piece. Something else that I did do once my product Product had dried a bit further was that I used a little paintbrush in certain areas to slightly dampen the paper and I just used my fingernail to pull and distress that label back because I felt like the distressing would have happened once the label was on the jar and I just tried to think where that natural wear would occur so again this is personal preference I wanted this so it looked like a vintage apothecary jar but to each their own. Once I was happy with that amount of distressing, I sealed the label again with the flat clear coat and then I also sealed the lid that goes with this canister. For our next little container, I selected this cotton oil design and I'm cutting it pretty close to the design itself so that the black border isn't going to make it super obvious when we don't get it on there perfect. This is a square design on a round surface. I'm misting my decoupage paper first. I've already got some product down and then I'm very carefully using my fingers to smooth the design down. Again, this is not going to sit perfect, but this is going to look like a vintage label. So I'm going to be able to distress it in the areas where it's obvious that it's not sitting exactly perfect. We're going to get wrinkles, we're going to get age, but that's what we want. We want it to look vintage. So I'm pressing it down. And then once I have it in place, I'm going to actually come in and use my fingernail to distress the label back. I didn't wait for it to dry this time. I thought, let's just get right to it. Let's distress some of the edges. And then once I'm happy with all that distressing, I will seal the entire canister. Next, I decided that I wanted to add a detail to the lid. So I'm using this smaller design from IOD's adornment stamp. I'm going to be using the permanent black ink. I'm inking up the design and then I'm going to be tidying up any areas where I got some excess ink and then I'm going to be applying it to the lid in the center. So I am very carefully holding it in place. My other fingers are holding the lid in place. I'm pressing down and carefully bending and manipulating 
circulating the stamp so that I have good contact. Now on this one, I decided that I wanted to wipe back some of the excess. This is going to give it a distressed sort of a look. I probably wiped a little bit more back than I had intended, but it doesn't matter. It will just add to that vintage feel. I then decided that I would add another stamp to the other side. This one, I wasn't going to really wipe back the excess. I wanted the design to be a little bit more prominent. I then decided to add the leaf sort of style border to the top. Now there is a curved style border, so I decided that that would be perfect to use on this round top. So I'm inking that up, pulling back any of the ink that I got in the places that I shouldn't, and then I'm going to position it over the top of the lid and carefully press down. And these are interconnecting. So once I had the image the way I wanted, I just repeated the same process of inking up the design and then very carefully pressing it down. When I got towards the end, I realized that I was going to have to adapt the stamp to suit my needs. So I inked it up and then I worked out how much I was actually going to need of the stamp and I wiped off the excess before stamping. To add a little bit more age, I'm using IOD's Vintage Textures stamp, the Crackle stamp in particular, and I'm just applying it in random sort of areas. I then used a baby wipe to wipe back some of the excess ink to fade those cracks a little bit. Remember to be able to do this, your painted surface has to be sealed before you apply the stamps and not every ink is going to allow you to wipe back the excess ink without smudging. So make sure you do a little test before you try this out. Finally, to tone the paint a little, I'm going to add some of Dixie Belle's Au Naturel Voodoo Gel Stain. I'm applying it with a small brush and then I'm using a baby wipe to dab and wipe away some of the excess. This is going to alter the tone. It's going to give it a very old world sort of vintage croc feel. I'm applying that to both of the canisters. And here are our finished apothecary style jars. I love how these turned out. Those beautiful labels from the Label Master Board are absolutely gorgeous and they work beautifully with the IOD stamps. Let me know what you think of these in the comments. For our final project, I'm going to be using this book that I thrifted. I'm going to actually be peeling back the color cover to leave the paper cover. I have a more detailed video on this that I can link below, but basically you're pulling the design off and just leaving the paper underneath. And I love doing this because they look so old and vintage and often they have hidden signs of age under there as well. It is a little bit time consuming. So if you want to paint your books instead, I completely understand but I definitely feel like it's worth it. So I've peeled the entire cover off and then I've grabbed this design from the label master board. And again, I'm trimming that. I'm keeping it nice and neat this time because again, this would have been a professionally done project. So then I'm going to use some of Dixie Belle's flat clear coat to decoupage the design down in the center. I'm laying down a strip of product first and then smoothing the design down with my brush. I've still got a little bit of product on it. Then I'm li lifting up the rest of the design and repeating the same process, pressing the design down. I decided to work in steps here because it was a bit of a longer design. But again, this is going to be to your personal preference.
Next, I grabbed out my JRV Apothecary labels again. I'm going to tape off the area that I don't want to use. I'm going to be stenciling on the spine of the book. I'm using the Anchor Silk Mineral Paint again, and I want this to be a pretty faded design, so I'm not being super heavy with my paint. And then once that's dry, I'm using some 220 grit sandpaper to sand it back. I then sealed the front and back of the book with Dixie Belle's flat clear coat. Next, I decided to use one of the borders from the adornment stamp. I felt like these had a very vintage feel so that they would go beautifully with this project. So I've peeled off the design that I wanna use. I then have some clear plastic that I'm using as my clear mount, and then I'm using some of IOD's permanent black ink. I'm going to be positioning this border stamp around the edges of our decoupaged label. So I'm positioning it and then carefully pressing down. Now, I don't need this to be perfect. Remember, this is going to give us a vintage feel. It's going to look like a really old, worn and weathered book. So I'm not worried about perfection here. So I'm going to apply the stamp either side and then I'm going to ink up part of the stamp to do the top and the bottom. Now I did miss a little bit on the top right there. You can see I'm just fixing that up. And then I'm adding the stamp up the top and the bottom. Again, I've rubbed off some of the excess ink to do this. I'm then going to add it to the border as well. And I really like how the end of this stamp sort of frames the little title. It, it looks almost intentional here. That was a, um, a happy accident. And then I'm going to use some 220 grit sandpaper to lightly distress the book back. And here's our finished vintage style book. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It was super easy using that decoupage paper to give a plain thrifted book a makeover and it goes beautifully with the IOD stamps. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video and that these projects have given you some ideas on how you can use Roy Cycled's new label masterboard decoupage paper. I think it is absolutely gorgeous and there are so many possibilities. I have barely used any of the labels in this design, so lots to choose from. Let me know if you had a favorite project from today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment, and share it out to a friend that you think might enjoy it. If you haven't already, I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.